We never got any documents on the case that we were concerned about. You made a third elect. I asked him to sketch for me what the objects look like. Hi, I'm Alejandro Rojas, and I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm at a conference sponsored by the Center for UFO Research. This conference is a little bit different than others. It's focused on the official and scientific investigation of UFOs. We were looking for highly credentialed government officials, military people, uh, investigators who work for governments, and PhDs, people that, whose credentials you can't argue with of the highest level, and who have really thoughtfully been involved with the subject matter, who are not making a lot of sensationalistic claims, but are really factually oriented. Well, I think, to me, the most persuasive cases are those where a UFO enters a well-instrumented environment. A good example would be the strategic air command bases. And you have a, as I say, an environment that is loaded with optical equipment and highly trained people and so forth. And uh, it definitely the encounters that have taken place in strategic air command bases, that to me, represent the strongest evidence. These people have traveled long distance to be in here. Ken Center spearheaded the event with the help of Leslie Kane. Center has been active in the UFO community since the 1980s, and for Kent, this was a very personal event. I've got multiple myeloma. I've got a terminal cancer, an incurable cancer. Um, and I know I've already been through chemo once, so I know time's running out. It's, it's one of these ones you try to maintain, you hit when it comes back, but every time it comes back, it gets smarter. It's one of those smart cancers. So it's harder to fight it off. So, you know, I've, I've already been through the chemo battle, and, uh, and I'm way over uh, the average for coming back and getting out of remission. So I had to get this done. Uh, it was on my bucket list. This is something I've always wanted to do. Now is the time to do it just because of my health alone. So um, now that this conference is done, I'll address my health issues and then give that a good fight and go for round two. And same thing, have another seminar and another conference. That's what I want to do. So just keep going. The event also gave Kent's family the opportunity to see more of what Kent's passion for this field was all about. Oh, they've got a lot better understanding. Yeah, yeah, they've got a lot better understanding. I've always told the stories, but the other thing I, I, I did for this conference and for my family was I had my sighting recreated. When you hear the story, you weren't there, so it, it's kind of hard to, to accept something that strange. And then when you do trust and love someone and you believe in them, it's still hard to imagine it in your head. So to be able to sit and look at it, you know, I think it was a clincher. They were all just shocked and um, it's everything I said, it's everything I said that happened, you know, uh, since 1985. So it was great for them to be able to see it. One of the great things about having people from all over the world is hearing about the different attitudes on the subject. They don't, they don't get embarrassed, not at all. There is no ridicule on this subject. If you think that 85% of the population believes in the phenomena, it is impossible to, to actually try to ridicule. Now we do have uh, plenty of what you may call debunkers, but they are slowly dying out because they make no sense. In France, it's a, we are a civil institute. Our goal is not to protect the, the country. Our goal is to try to understand this phenomenon and to try to reply to the, to the French population to, to explain what can be. We open uh, roughly 200 folders per year. And among that, we can say that uh, about 10% in the recent years, let's say 20 reports per year, would be classified as unidentified. Because today what we are seeing is that ex-professors, ex-pilots and so are in, very interested in this area, but they don't have an official function. We should have an official body examining some specific uh, events and come to a formal conclusion. And then we could say, maybe it is extraterrestrial. But today, just bluntly stating it's extraterrestrial, of course the option is there, and I would defend that option, 
because that's the only explanation we have today. But we didn't uh, investigate all these cases thoroughly enough with the necessary expertise. The conference included lectures and Q&A discussion with the audience. Some of the lectures also included cases that never had been shared in the U.S. previously. Kane was pleased with the gathering and hopes that it will have an impact on how the subject is viewed. It's extremely important to present the serious side of the subject, to not talk about extraterrestrials that are here talking to human beings, cover-ups that have taken place in the government, bad deeds, you know, disclosure, all of that. That whole package of stuff <clears throat> has a negative effect in my opinion. And it's often ridiculed in the media. And when I look at what they're saying, I think, of course it's going to be ridiculed in the media. I'm a journalist, I know the way they think. If you give them fodder for ridicule, they're going to take it. And, um, you know, but then these people blame the media. And I don't think, you know, when they're going to talk about extraterrestrials engaging human beings for decades and bodies being stored and all that kind of stuff, the media is going to, I mean, nobody can take that seriously because most people don't know anything about the subject. So you have to start with the basics, which is the data that we have for physical, a physical phenomenon that is not yet explained. This has been a great couple of days. And this is the type of information I believe we need in the United States if we're going to change the way we deal with unidentified flying objects. From Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Alejandro Rojas for OpenMinds.tv.